Sup Shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track from an ex named Chris Paulson titled Gone Without a Trace and if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen and full disclosure I have reviewed some of Chris Paulson's music before but today we got a new track, their latest one from them. We got a little description here, it says Mental health is an essential part of overall well-being that affects us all yet it is often overlooked or misunderstood. As a result, many people who suffer from mental health conditions are too ashamed or scared to speak out and seek help. Seek help, should I say. Breaking the stigma around mental health means being open and honest about our experiences with mental illness and how it has affected our lives. I think that's a beautiful thing to write a song about. So we're going to listen through this track from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Instant with the instrumental theme. With no second chance, I won't be able to look into your eyes, right? It's a uh, very full sounding so far. I think the background elements are a little bit kind of subtle in comparison to his voice in the mix, but I'm assuming that's because you've got some heavier elements in the chorus. Yeah, there we go. I like the back and vocals and the sides, they're really pretty. I thought there was going to be heavier elements there, that's good, or louder elements. I mean, there's, there's a sense of angst to his vocal performance there, a little bit of vocal fry there, a bit of desperation that I think mirrors what we're talking about, both in the description of the YouTube video and within the song. I, I think that the, having the drums come in in the second part is great development, nice sense, semblance of extra sort of groove there, um, flow pushing us forward. And the other sort of synth elements as well as guitar parts and bass bits we've had here, uh, they, they create a really interesting picture. It's catchy, but it's also not insincere, you know? Great. Right. How we're gonna vary this interlude. Why did you go and not say goodbye? Oh, that was really short. That just flew by. Um, yeah, that's obviously a plus because typically if you're wondering when the track is going to end, that's the exact opposite, right? I'm stoked that it flew by. I just want to have another listen through that verse verse, the first verse, just to sort of get a bit of ac extra context for this track before I continue and then we'll do the conclusion. And this is the conclusion of my review of this track by an act named Chris Paulson titled Gone Without a Trace. Um, what do I think this track is about? It's tricky because I'm getting two different stories here. Like I'm looking at the video and I'm listening to the track. 
from the song, it could easily be simply, you know, at face value, talking about like the dreams are gone, etc. Wondering where the person is gone. Why didn't you say goodbye? You could assume it's just about a person who just up, just up and left your life, right? It's it's someone who just like maybe they're really important to you, and you welcome them back with open arms, etc. But they're just gone, you know, and they're not presumably they're not coming back. So that's the first kind of story I got from it. But then the second one from the video is that they lost themselves and they're waiting for themselves to get themselves back, to get their own mind back, their own life back, etc. And I, I think just with him taking off the mask and seeing himself, if that makes sense, he's afraid of parts of himself. And inevitably, he has to come to, to terms with that and figure out that, you know, he is he is who he is and that's what it is. So I think that there's multiple ways of interpreting this. I think that it's actually quite smart because there's a lot of people even nowadays with all the... Because apparently May is Mental Health Awareness Month, which is, which I think is beautiful. I think it's fantastic we have that. It's really important for people to be aware about like, you know, how important it is to take care of your mental health, to treat others who are having issues with respect, care, and dignity. And, you know, to be also be aware of the stigmas, right? But there's a lot of people who, regardless of that, just don't really have a lot of sympathy for people who are mentally unwell. Some people who are even very cruel about it. So I think for those people, they might relate more automatically with the story about, oh, the, the person left that I wanted to. And that they might relate to the person leaving their relationship, whereas other people might be able to relate to the story of the person finding themselves it's it's op it's open ended in a sense. I think you got the video doing one thing and the song doing the other. I think that's beautiful. I think that's great. Really smart uh, songwriting and lyricism there, as well as the audio visual experience as a whole. I think it's really cool. Um, I mean, in addition to that, I, I think that the uh, the the vocal performance from Chris Paulson is good. There are some really cool melodies there. Um, I'm hearing a little bit of tuning on his voice, like a little bit of auto tune there. And I could be incorrect, and if I am, then obviously people are going to let me know. But like, it's just the the way the way he goes between his notes is just a little bit too clean for me, almost like it's being controlled by something other than himself and his vocal technique. Now, it's possible that he's singing that well without any sort of tuning on his voice. And I don't have an issue with it, by the way. There's nothing wrong with it. Lots of musicians use auto tune nowadays. It's fine. I'm just for for disclosure. Um, but I can I can almost I can hear his vocal tone. I would actually maybe even have considered that it might have been better to have not had auto tune or any tuning on his voice whatsoever, because some of the vocal runs he was doing, the melodies, the little shifts, especially in the developments in the latter half of the hook section, were dope. I don't think that he needed any assistance getting those out. Maybe it's just simply him wanting to make sure that his vocals are as like tight melodically as the rest of the elements in a very reasonably complicated composition. But at the same time, I personally feel as if it would have been fine either way. That's just transparency. Uh, that's it. I, I like the the way the backing vocals come in and the, and the latter half of the hook sections. I think they're nice and warm and sweet and kind of swing really nicely around the sides of the headphones in a way that's very meaningful. I think they're really well handled. The the the, the sings the the vocals sound really authentic. Like he has been going through those any of those situations I described, and it's a believable performance. And I'm happy with it. You know, he sang, sang really well, some creativity there with those approaches, and it's it's really engaging and interesting from that from those perspectives alone. Um, outside of like the story and the vocals, I think the the track at three minutes is within that two, three, four minute sweet spot, like absolutely in the middle. And I think that's a smart move because again, this day and age, you know, a lot of people have some limited attention spans, rah, 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 rah. We, we handled it well. We handled it well. And the reason I say we handled it well is because there was no filler in here. We had a few verse sections, a few chorus sections. Lots of variety within the composition itself. So there was development of the motifs and various layers, layers within the arrangement in order to keep the listener interested. The storytelling was compelling. And I, I think it was a great use of time. The uh, guitar parts with a little bit of chorus and stuff on the clean tar parts are a bit misty sounding. They were great, really pretty. Alongside, you know, the other sort of like synthy elements that came in afterwards and I, I think the drums were now kind of pitter pattering around especially when they came in a bit more sort of full bore and that second verse were a great sort of way of pushing the song forward uh, we didn't have much development of the percussion but i don't think we necessarily needed to because it was more of a vocal focus than anything else any other elements here from like the bass to the other sort of string paddish parts there it's sort of sub layers and some pretty sort of melodies and and digital elements there were predominantly there to sort of create a foundation for the vocalist and i think that we handled that well there were distinctions between the various sections there from the vocal perspective like there was more singing in the chorus and, and hook than there was in that verse section i think there was maybe a slight chord progression or baseline change in in the in the interlude but 
there wasn't a super huge amount of variety with that outside of that. I don't think that's a bad thing in a short track. That's okay. You know, we don't necessarily need to overcomplicate the composition from like a baseline or progression standpoint if we're happy with the theme that we've gotten, if we have enough tools in our toolbox to kind of make it more sort of like tantalizing as we go along and not make it, avoid making it a little bit kind of like, you really, with a single like this where it's clearly designed to a, to 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 appeal to a fan base that is familiar with Chris Paul's and stuff at this point and a wider one, um, these are the decisions that must be made and they're fine. I would have maybe appreciated more kind of like development of like, for instance, what do we have at the start? Right, we had... The we had like field percussion, etc., right? Yeah, we, we had some interesting effects on the guitars and it's not like we had sort of like vocals the whole time we had a bit of time for some instrumental sort of like push there we could have potentially had other lead elements there as like a foil to chris's stuff later on as we were familiar i think at the point later on where okay we could have potentially had like a lead section in the interlude there as like a way of kind of breaking things up or even in like the second half of the interlude if that makes sense i think it was great to have the percussion come out in the first half of the final chorus there as a way of sh shaking things up from what we had previously with the with the other hooks aside from the comment on the lead element having another lead part in the interlude i'm, I'm happy with the composition i think that it's, it's really well considered and i don't think there was a note out of place and i mean finally the uh on oh, the theme how did the theme sound i don't know it didn't sound super duper emotionally charged to me i think it was reasonably conservative in the way that it was approached we had a lot of elements that sounded good by virtue of whatever they were doing there was no attempt at trying to make it sound too edgy or anything like that. I think they simply wanted to have a palatable theme that kind of indicated a sense of emotional complexity by ver virtue of the various layers associated with it without going too deep into the source and trying to sort of edge in one direction or another. I think most of the direction there from like a, uh, you should feel this perspective came from the singing. And I think that uh, it sounded pretty. That's what the theme sounded like to me. I'm not sure if it necessarily helped the way they were trying to describe the track, but maybe it did through being a little more neutral. But anyways, the studio recording, mixing, and mastering was good. Again, I wasn't initially sort of like sure if the vocals were placed in a way that they needed to earlier on in the piece because the percussion was a little bit more sort of filtered and sort of like neutral. And so I could hear that things were going to get louder at a later pace there because I can t I've heard Chris Paul's and stuff before and they usually do mix and master pretty well and i'm happy that things kind of developed and got a bit sort of like more kind of balanced like from a, like a, an arrangement and sort of leveling perspective later on i don't think it would have been wise to have had everything the same loudness the whole time don't get me wrong and i appreciate that ch attempt to perceive changes in loudness especially when a track is as entirely sort of compressed and limited as this you know we didn't have a lot of wiggle room for massive changes in like uh, loudness here because of um, you know, like the tightness of the various bass drum, guitar, synth, uh, other elements here. We even had some like orchestral drums going to like that first chorus there with the strings on the side. It was a lot of variety to it for sure, and I can't really fault them. You know, lots of depth of the mix with the sub layers of the synths, etc. The various elements were nicely notched into the into the frequency spectrum in a stereo field, nice and wide without any reson you know resonant frequencies there. And and basically, uh, the track was nice and loud without pumping. And this is my uh you know my review of chris paulson's track gone without a trace hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please go show some love via the various social medias and the youtube page and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever thought the crazy stuff going on in the world and i'll catch you in the next review spider hands out <laughs>